bearers. Shut! Stand up, bearers. Harry, stand up! Right up front. Quick! Hard! Standards. Stand up. Peace. as well as those men who returned and simply got on with their lives. We remember them, Thetford's forgotten soldiers. God save the Queen! And now please welcome the Mayor of Thetford, Councillor Mike Brindle. Good afternoon everyone and welcome. It's lovely to see you all here. It's really great to be out in the sun enjoying what I hope you'll, real, you'll feel to be an appropriate occasion. Whenever you go, wherever you go through, throughout the country, town or village, you will find memorials to the fallen. And that's very appropriate. Until recently, of course, those who came back, those who returned had no support, they were just required to get on with their lives. For example, my dad was an army officer from 1938 until 1946. He came back, he resumed life. As a little boy, I wanted to know all about his army experience and he had no wish whatever to tell me, but once he just said to me, I lost eight years of my life and that's why we need to remember those who served and returned. There's no memorial for it. These are the forgotten soldiers. But thanks to the help of Leaping Hare, volunteers sponsored the forgotten service people will now be remembered here in Thetford. Thanks also to the foresight of our much loved and much missed 
local historian David Osborne. As a historian myself, I'd like to say very firmly, our good local historian, he knew what he was doing, he did it well. We have so much to thank David for. On behalf of the people and the Town Council of Thetford, may I thank all who made this memorial garden possible. The memorial garden which we open today will be a constant reminder to Thetford's residents and visitors that those who served and survived will not be forgotten. It also marks the work of David Osborne awarded the freedom of Thetford in recognition of his commitment to the community. Thank you and I'd like to introduce Joy Osborne. I can't tell you how proud I am to stand here today to see this garden completed on behalf of what Dave started. Unfortunately, he couldn't see it through to the end, but this was his one project he really wanted to complete. He had such admiration for the soldiers who were forgotten and now they won't be, but there's so many people to thank Without all the hard work people have put in, this wouldn't have happened. And one little story I have to tell you is Dave was so committed that while he was doing his research, he found Albert Wyatt's grave. Now he was one of the soldiers who played football with the Germans on Christmas day. And as part of that, one of our French friends we're staying with some friends of ours and Dave had even got him involved cleaning up the grave so that it would be there for people to see. So if anybody wants to visit Albert Wyatt's grave, it's plot F107 and I have taken on the task of keeping it as tidy as I can. But as I say, there's just so many people to thank here today. I thank my family for being here and my friends for giving me the strength to get through this. But the one person I really must thank and I expect she's hiding up is Corinne because without all of this, this wouldn't have happened. She has been the best coordinator that I could have ever had on my side. And I just want to thank everybody and let it continue in Dave's name. Thank you. I can't tell you what a privilege it is to be here today. I don't know if you want to come a little nearer so you can hear better, do if you wish to. Uh, it's marvellous to have been asked to do this and I'm most grateful. I had the privilege of serving for several years as chaplain to the Mayor of Thetford as honorary chaplain to the British Legion and the Royal Air Force Association. And I had the great uh, privilege of uh, being involved in the dedication of the memorial to Far East Prisoners of the War down by Nuns Bridges. But one of my most cherished memories of my time in Thetford was the great privilege of conducting the annual Act of Remembrance on November, the, on Remembrance Sunday each year which was, for me, a very moving event. I like telling people, and it's true, that my father was born in the century before last. And he was called up at the age of 18 to serve in what was then the Army Air Corps in the First World War. He also served in the Second World War as an air raid warden. In fact, he was uh, responsible for instructing the air raid wardens in Ipswich. And um, thankfully, he survived both those terrible conflicts virtually unscathed. But of course, many people didn't. And many survived with scars that nobody ever saw, mental scars and other kinds of consequences. 
I think, for instance, of a lovely man I knew in Thetford called Bill Massingham. Many of you will have known him. Bill was a prisoner in the Far East in the Second World War, and he suffered the most appalling torture uh, in his time there. He came home and he resumed normal life, and rather like Nelson Mandela, he decided he would leave his anger and bitterness behind. And he came home, and those of you who know him will know that he was a marvellous man. But as a consequence of his injuries, he was never able to have children. What a sacrifice. What suffering. And for us, of course, for the next generation. They gave their today for our tomorrow. And we thank God for that. Now, of course, today's memorial focuses much more on the First World War. And, uh, but again, some of those who returned had the most terrible consequences as a result of their experiences. And this marvellous project is a wonderful way of making sure they are not forgotten. I think it was a little thoughtless of David Osborne to depart before this project was finished. But how wonderful that he too is remembered here, partly for the reason which uh, the mayor has just mentioned, that he was a historian. He knew more about the history of Thetford, I suspect, than anybody who was alive in his day. He was a marvellous source of information for, of, to, of all sorts to this community, and he was a marvellous servant of the community as well, as well as being just a jolly decent fellow, very modest, quiet man, but one who everybody respected enormously. And so it's quite right and proper that his name should be associated with this wonderful project and this great uh, memorial. So as we give thanks to the, for the ordinary men and women who suffered as they did and came home, as the town crier has said, came home and just got on with life. It's very important that we remember them. I don't know how you've been wasting your time during lockdown, but I've been watching an uh, old series of that wonderful TV police drama, Unforgotten. And the essence of that drama, if you haven't seen it, it's a good programme. The essence of it is that if somebody died long ago, they may have been virtually forgotten. Nobody may be missing them. Many people never have heard of them. And yet, every single life matters. Every life matters. And this memorial ensures that those many lives, which we don't know the names of, are now, as they should be, unforgotten. So I'm going to dedicate this memorial by saying two simple prayers. First of all, a prayer of thanksgiving for David, and then a prayer of thanksgiving for all those who gave their lives and who suffered as a result of war. And then I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer before a simple, some simple words of dedication, and then we shall hear the last post. So as we stand, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer, may we? God of mercy and Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks today for the life of David Osborne, for all that he did and all that he was, for his commitment to this community and all that he leaves behind as his, inherit as his heritage. We thank you for your grace and mercy which followed him through his life and for all the memories we treasure today. And so we entrust Joy and his family and all those whose lives were touched by his to your gracious care and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ever-living God, we remember all those from conflicts past whom you have gathered from the storms and troubles and conflicts of this world into the peace of your kingdom. May that same peace calm our fears, 
bring justice to all people and establish harmony among all the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. Do please join in with me if you wish to do so. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we dedicate this memorial garden in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray that it may be a place of peace and comfort to all who come here, and a powerful reminder that none of those who gave their lives during and after major conflicts will ever be forgotten. Amen. Standard bearers, carry standards. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Stand the bearers. Order. Standards. <laughs>